next have to analyze the last two cases in type 1. So we're still working with type 1 cross-sections of the production function. And this is the second part of the sheet of paper that was in the class handouts whose first start whose first part we did in the previous lesson and here we're going to work on type C and D for type 1. You'll recall that C is decreasing returns to scale and D is first increasing and then decreasing returns to scale. So with in parts in case C with decreasing returns to scale we've already verified that the long run total cost curve has this shape and long run is that in other words is convex and long run average cost is rising let's think about long run marginal cost well this is a fairly simple shape those tangent lines are getting steeper and steeper, and so long run marginal cost is rising. If you know that average is rising, then you know marginal is above it, so that's one reason you can say that long run marginal cost is above long run average cost. Uh, another way would be to draw a line to generate an average, let's say here, and that would show that. the marginal is steeper, that is the blue line is steeper than the orange line. So again the longer marginal cost is bigger than the longer average cost. In case 11, long run average is going to be u-shaped. Lines like this, this, it'll be its smallest approximately here and then it'll start rising again so that's the explanation of long run average cost. Uh, long run marginal cost starts out really steep, gets really flat here, equals long run average cost there. So starts out really steep, gets really flat here, equals long run average cost, where long run average is at a minimum. And then long run marginal cost gets quite large, which it is over here. So that's the long run curves. The short run curves we uh, on in graphs nine and eleven we already saw. That's just the the standard type one short run total cost curve. And for ten and 11, we have the standard short run average cost, average total cost, and short run marginal cost curves. Let's talk about graph number 10 a little bit more. In graph 9, the point where the totals are equal corresponds to this point, where both the marginals and the averages are equal. Long run marginal cost is this, short run marginal cost is this, so they're equal at that point. Long run average cost is this, short run average cost is this, so again they're equal at that point. That's a reflection of what we saw in the last lesson, which is that when the totals are equal, then at that point the averages are equal and the marginals are equal. The averages aren't equal to the marginals. I'm saying the short run average equals the long run average, and the short run marginal equals the long run marginal. You'll note that the bottom part of short run average total cost, where it equals short run marginal cost, occurs to the left of the point where the short run average total cost curve touches the long run average cost curve. In the graph that was just uh, above it, I guess graph number eight, it occurred on the on the left. Let me describe.
describe why. So if you magnify the area around around this point, what you got is a long run average cost curve that's rising. And you're trying to draw in the short run average total cost. Now you know that the short run average total cost has to be bigger than the long run average cost except at one point. So you can't draw short run average total cost. I'll change the color. You can't draw short run average total cost like this. That won't work because in this region here it's below long run average total cost and that's disallowed by this equation. So you have to you have to draw short run average total cost. It's, the, it's a U shaped thing and you have to draw the U so that it's always above this upward sloping line except at one point. And the only way to draw a U that's above the, that upward sloping line except the one point is to draw the U like this. So that when it touches this upward sloping point, it itself is upward sloping, which means it hasn't reached its bottom yet. So its bottom has to be somewhere over here. Okay, so that's the reason why in graph number 10 the left hand red dot is is to the left of the right hand red dot the the bottom of short run average total cost short run average total cost bottom has to be to the left of the point where short run average total cost equals long run average cost right uh, I think that explains graph number 10. Again, in graph number 10, I drew a long run average cost sort of concave, but it could be convex, it could be a straight line. Um, all you know about long run marginal costs is since average is rising, you know marginal is above it, but marginal could be going up and down. I just drew it upward sloping here. How about graph number 12? Well, the left hand part of graph number 12 is the part where you have it's like increasing returns to scale and the right hand part is the part like decreasing returns to scale so the right hand part of graph number 12 looks, looks like graph number 10 let me pause a minute for you just to be able to compare the right hand part of graph 12 to graph 10 Okay, if you want more time, you can pause the video. The left-hand part of graph 12 looks like uh, graph 8, which we don't have on this screen, but which you have on the handout and which you had in the previous video. How about this, ex exactly the middle part of graph 12? Now, it's not the middle geometrically, but it's the part where long-run average cost reaches its minimum. The geometry of the averages is pretty well set. Long run average cost reaches minimum. Short run average total cost, that's A. It's like that. Actually, the only unknown here is why did I draw B, which is short run margin cost, so steep? There is an alternative geometry that's possible. So what I've drawn at the bottom is an alternative geometry. In this alternative geometry, short run marginal cost is pretty flat. It's flatter than long run marginal cost. In graph number 12, short run marginal cost is steeper than long run marginal cost. It turns out that this alternative geometry is wrong. That can't happen. To see why, let's go to graph 11. And I'll 
basically you want to sketch a magnified version of graph 11. So in graph 11, at the long run total cost that's coming up, and short run total cost it's looking like this. Now consider that here everything's equal, right? Totals are equal, averages are equal, marginals are equal. Consider just before and just after that point and look at the marginals. The long run marginal hasn't changed much. The short run marginal is really flat to the left and really steep to the right. So what's happening is long run marginal is not changing a lot. It's not it's not doing much. Long run marginal is almost the same both places. Short run marginal is changing drastically. That is not consistent with this wrong figure. In the wrong figure, the short run marginal cost is changing less than the long run marginal cost. And that's not what's happening in the lower right. In the lower right, the short run marginal cost is rapidly changing. And that's consistent with graph number 12. Here's the short run marginal cost, which is rapidly changing. The long run marginal cost is changing much more lazily. So that's why graph number 12 is drawn correctly and why why this part, this graph here, is, is not right. Now, that's a small detail. If you were to get this wrong in an exam, that's not a big deal. The general uh, patterns are a lot more important than these, knowing, for example, that where the totals are equal, then the averages are going to be equal, and the marginals are going to be equal. Knowing that the Av short run average has to be above the long run average except at one point whether it looks like that or or whether it looks like this the short run average is above the long run average except except at one point and at that point the short run average is the same so i mean the short run average is the same as the long run average so the short run marginal has to be the same as the long run marginal okay so we've finished now with type 1 in the short run, cases A, B, C, and D in the long run. You can refer to what we've done so far as type A1, type B1, type C1, and type D1. Now we need to do type 2A, type 2B, type 2C, and type 2D.